Alfa Romeo Tunnel Review We've been here before. The Alfa Romeo Tunnel is the brand's latest make-or-break model, the one that is going to turn its fortunes around and thrust it back into the hearts and minds of the mainstream car buyer. Well, that's the idea, but it's not the first time Alfa Romeo has been in this situation. The 156 was a minor success in the 1990s, but the Alfa Romeo 159, despite gorgeous looks, couldn't keep it up. The Alfa Romeo Giulietta loped along, but the Alfa Romeo Giulia and Stelvio have been as much of a commercial flop as they've been a critical success. And the less said about the Alfa Romeo for C the better. As much as we love the Giulia, a traditional saloon with fabulous driving dynamics but SOSO interior and infotainment, it was not the right car for the era. This time, Alfa is at least looking in the right direction. A premium-flavored crossover SUV with exclusively hybrid powertrains, and an electric version on the way, could hardly be more 2022. Actually, it is even more 2022 than that, because it comes with a non-fungible token, or NFT. Yes, really. The flip side of trying to crack such a popular segment is that the Tun Ale will have plenty of competitors and will need to find a way to stand out. Pretty much every car manufacturer short of Ferrari and Caterham have a horse in this race. The most obvious rivals are the BMW X1, Mercedes-Benz GLA, Audi Q3, Volvo XC40 and Range Rover Evoque, but you could argue that posh versions of cars like the Hyundai Tucson and Peugeot 3008 are valid alternatives, too. It's not encouraging that the Tunnel wades into battle with an architecture that's an evolution of the Fiat Punto of 2005. Back then, hybrid power was still a niche eco-fad, but no one's laughing now. Least, we suspect, Alpha's engineers as they tried to find room for the plug-in hybrid version's battery pack. The regular hybrid was a little easier, because its 0.8 kWh battery is small enough to live in the center tunnel. The groundwork has been done at Jeep, as the Tun Ale is largely based on the Jeep Compass, which is available with versions of the same powertrains. And that's slightly worrying, because in our experience, that car is rather rough and ready in many ways. The tunnel was famously delayed by 12 weeks because incoming CEO Jean-Philippe Imperato wasn't impressed with the quality of the existing prototypes. First UK deliveries are now slated for September, so let's hope that extra time to fine-tune things pays dividends. The car we're driving today is the 158 brake horsepower hybrid. You could view it more as a beefy mild hybrid than a full hybrid, as the electric motor that lives in the gearbox has only 20 brake horsepower to boost the 1.5-liter engine's low-end torque. It can drive the car by itself, but with so little power, it's only really for maneuvering or inching forward in traffic. There is a 130 brake horsepower version, too, which we've previously tried in the Jeep Renegade, but the UK will only get it in the Alpha-specific 158 brake horsepower tune. The other powertrain option will a plug-in hybrid, a more powerful variation on Jeep's 4XE powertrain. In the Italian car, the 1.3-liter engine and electric motor produced 271 brake horsepower rather than the 237 brake horsepower of the Jeep thanks to a bigger electric motor and a 15.5 kWh battery. Alpha owes it to its reputation as a sporting brand to ensure even its crossover SUV handles with some vim and vigor. Riding on the same platform as the Jeep Compass, it is naturally front-wheel drive, with rear-wheel drive provided by an electric motor in the plug-in hybrids. All its rivals, including the BMW X1, are front-wheel drive, too, so that's nothing to be ashamed about. To offer more driving engagement than the class average, the Tunnel uses a very quick steering rack, 2.3 turns lock to lock, and features torque vectoring by braking, frequency selective dampers as standard and adaptive items and four piston brakes on the range topping Veloce. The big question is whether this is going to be the car to truly save Alfa Romeo. It's a storied brand, so we certainly hope so, but in short, it's not the game changer it probably should have been. 
The engineers will tell you that the small electric motor and battery are right-sized, but in practice, they're undersized to provide a truly convincing hybrid experience. The engine cuts in very quickly and it gets quite buzzy when it's pushed. It's better than the full hybrids from Honda and Kia, but a petrol 2.0-liter BMW X1 will be faster and more refined. Same with the 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox, it's okay, but if you're coming from a BMW 8-speed auto, you won't be impressed with the smoothness, speed, or shift points it chooses. You can take control with the manual mode on the gear selector or the huge metal paddles on the Veloce, but really, who are you kidding in a 158 brake horsepower crossover SUV? The tech briefing for the car also went to great lengths to illustrate how the tunnel handles like a real alpha, with additional strengthening of the chassis and geometry changes to make sure that it is at once more fun to drive and more comfortable than the best competitor. To its credit, the Tunnel is one of the more dynamic options in the segment. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.